Hello, hello, hello. Today I'm going to show you something different than last time. Last time we created the silly crouching slash uh, crawling system. But this time we are going to make something very simple and easy. So what we are going to make is a door system. I don't know any better name for that. <laughs> So basically what it is, is that we are going to create two, diff uh, two actor blueprints. One for a door or any object you want uh, this to work. And the other one is the platform, uh, the actual button we are going to use. So this is basically something like, you know, in portal, portal games, you have to push the buttons to open doors and stuff like that. So this is exactly like that. Um, but what makes this actually easier is that whenever uh, you place the platform in on the map you can quickly just choose your targets uh, what it will you know open so i have two different cubes here to demonstrate also i have a checkbox for need weight I'll show you what this means. So it's, if I need weight and I'm gonna add new array element, let's say this box here. So need weight means when I step on the platform, it opens up and if I exit this box, so kinda end overlapping, it closes. That's what this means. But if we set off, need wait, uh, it opens it up and we leave and it stays open. So you can pretty much select any target here you want. It doesn't have to be any door or anything. It can be even this ground here if you want. Since we are going, because this selects everything from the actual level. So let's see, okay, don't miss that one. Or we can add second one and it can open both of these doors or every single door you have in your level or you know so this way you can actually specify you know space you can select specific doors you want this button to open and this is actually very easy to do it's it doesn't need much of coding so let's get started or oh, just to make sure I'm not going to make any player characters or game modes, so you can only implement this with your own project if you want. And but for this purpose, I think you should actually make your own character blueprint because I don't. I already have done that. And also, you may need some. Uh, 3d models or then you can create some inside Unreal Engine by making your shape with geometry and then you just you know let me just demonstrate okay or then you just select these uh, both of these uh, brushes and you go you know in the details panel you go down to brush settings and create static mesh I'm gonna call this blah. create static mess and as you can see it created us this static mess we wanted. But I'm not gonna create any new actually because I already have done that part so so yes um so let's actually get started um we need to two uh actor blueprints but we don't have to do any coding for the door. We only need to uh, code the platform. So let's create new blueprint class actor. I'm gonna call it pp underscore platform. Blah. I don't know. Blah. Yeah. Then I'm gonna copy this uh, pp underscore door. Blah. That's yeah. That's right. Let's save it and then we can open our platform blueprint. Um, okay, so as for this, we need three components. 
uh, two static meshes and one uh, box collision. Uh, static mesh. I'm gonna call this a button. I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna call it a frame, I suppose. Then I'm gonna create a box collision. Okay, so I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna set this up uh, here. The button I'm gonna use, platform, and for frame I'm gonna use outer. Then I'm gonna set this button location correctly, like that, so it looks more like it's a platform thing. Then what I have to do next is set this stupid uh, collision box in its place. Uh, y, X was 50 and Y was 50 for me. Okay, so I think this is, this is good. Yes, okay. So now we can actually get to coding. Um, we can delete all of these, we don't need this. Compound save. But what we need is to uh, begin overlap and end overlap for the box collision. So let's select box, right click, Add event for box, collision, and picking overlap. And the same thing for the end overlap. Okay. Now we want to make sure that it's a player that can only use this button, nothing else. So I'm gonna track out of the, uh, the other actor and cast to your uh, player character blueprint. So mine is tt underscore player tt as for teamwork trials. <laughs> um, I'm gonna do just in case this the same. I'm just gonna copy this down here. So end overlap. Okay. Um, now I think we can actually add these custom variables. We need three different custom variables. One uh, actor array and two booleans. So let's create a new variable. Let's call it a targets. I'd say yes, targets. And uh, variable type will be actor, uh, actor and object reference and this has to be an array it must be array and also we want to make this a public then next variable is gonna be need weight it can be like that it's gonna be public and variable type will be boolean and it's not gonna be a array and Last one is B has used. I don't know why I named them as B has used. I'm not really a coder. I can only do blueprints, but not actual coding, so it's funny. Mm. And we are gonna leave these default values as they are. So, um, now, next thing we need we are gonna work work on this picking overlap first. So we need a branch. So I'm gonna hold my B button B as banana B for banana and click. So we get branch. Let's hook it up and condition will be has used. And why we need has used? It's very simple. Um, because uh, if uh, it, it really depends on this need weight. So if this is true, has used will not be used. But if need weight is uh, false, we need has used because uh, whenever we push the button, 
game registers it uh, like, hey, this pattern has been used, you cannot use this anymore, it's already been used. So if you like go back and step on it, it won't, uh, you know, work anymore. So that's why I'm using has used. Um, then we need a timeline. So let's add, it's in the bottom add timeline. I'm going to call this movement. Uh, I double click to open it. And here we need two different uh the do two different timelines. I mean, inside this timeline, uh, length will be one, and we need one float. And let's call this a target location. And let's just add two points here. If you don't know how, just hold down Shift and click somewhere on this white line, and it's gonna make these keyframes. Uh, first one is going to be a zero and this value actually depends on your uh, I think it's your uh, mesh or object uh, size for me it worked nicely uh, the 100 worked nicely for my uh, cubes and then uh, the next, the second keyframe, the time will be one and value will be 300. And I'm just gonna select both right click and auto so we can get these smooth transitions. Um, then we need one more, which will be a vector. I, I think it looks, yes, vector. Oh, right. S yeah, uh, wait. No, don't wait. Okay, yes, this is correct. Of course. Uh, platform, yes. Okay, sorry. No, I was brain farting. Okay, so we are gonna make this will be renamed as a button button location. We are gonna lock X and Y because we don't want to touch them. We only want to focus on Z axis. And same thing, hold down shift and make two keyframes. Um, for me, the first keyframe time will be zero, but uh, the value depends on your button Z uh, location. So for me, it's 10. This is the default location. Yeah, so uh, 10 and the next one is going to be the time will be one and value will be zero. And again, I'm going to select both of them and just out of make them nice and curvy. And that's done. So we can go back to event graph. Um, so we are going to uh, we are going to hook from uh, the false to play. And after that, we are gonna select our button and we're gonna get it. Well, it automatically gets it, so. And let's track out of button and I'm gonna set relative location. This is what I will do. Um, update, hook it up, and button location with this new location. And that's it. Then we continue. Um, so now we have to s make sure, I mean, set uh, uh, that uh, the target location, as you can well already guess, the target location is for the actual door or a target object or the actor we want to move when we press the button. So uh, let's get target, get targets. Um, and we are gonna do for each loop and hook it up here. Then we can actually 
find a let's see can i find it from here set relative yes set a no that's not true uh set relative no that isn't how did i actually find this well let's see if you can just Back out and root comp. Oh yeah, get root component. And out of root component, we are gonna set relative. Now, set relative location. This is how I did it. Hook it up, and then uh, right click the new location and split struct. Then we are gonna we need here drag out of the root component and get world location and we are gonna split this return value and we're gonna hook x with the x y with y but c we are gonna hook with the target location of this uh, timeline like that yes now that's it then we have to make this end overlap also. This is not long. This is really short one. So we get this need weight as a get. We need a branch. And then from the false, we are gonna set has used. Set, I make, let's make, make this a uh, True, from false, true, yes. And then we just, we can hook this true with uh, reverse. Uh, we are almost done, we still need a little bit, well we don't actually really need, this is for set material, I can show you. So this is my early one, so in uh, with between the need weight brands from true, I set material of our button. It's red, originally, I mean, it's by default, it's red. And then movement, I dragged out of the direction and I switched on a timeline direction. And, for, and when it's forward, I will set the button uh, material to green so this basically is it's just for a visual you know thing but this this actually should be working right now as we want it to work so we can actually take a look at this um let's see so i'm gonna just delete this out of here i'm gonna make this one in here all oh, right, we still need actually work on the door because we have to add a static mesh. Static mesh door. I'm just gonna quickly add. It doesn't work. Well, it doesn't matter. We can still just use like a a, a cube from here, like that. Let's make it one. Hard. Oh. Right, uh, I, I, I'm not sure if this even works. It should work. No, wait, I did something. Ah, sorry. Brains are fucking farting. So let's go back here and let's find a cube. Like so. And let's make this up, 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 all the way up. Well, this seems like it's 50. I'm not sure if this even works. Size, the size was 50. Anyways, let's make this here. So now, all right, we still have to select this cube here. Yes, it's actually working. Need weight, yeah, we need, we need a weight. And boom, that's how you do this. Simple, really simple and easy. I hope this really helps you with your project if you need this one. And let's see what we will make next time. Thank you for watching.